Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on this Saturday night, uh, August 26, 2023. Uh, it's about 10.41 p.m. here in California. Latest activity looks like a 2.2 coming in to the Washington area. That's also showing up here on the map as well. Outside of Mount Rainier, a 2.3. Uh, looks like a little distance there outside of the Mount Rainier volcano there in Washington. Pretty shallow earthquake. Uh, so on that note, let's double check, see what's going on up there on the seismograph stations. By the way, trimmer activity 67 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. Here's the latest uh, map here of some earthquake activity taking place here around the uh, Mount Rainier area. Now, it doesn't doesn't look like it covers uh, the outside activity just within the circle, but I guarantee you we're going to uh, be able to see that uh, two-pointer that just came in. Possibly. Uh, it may be delayed slightly, but I just wanted to see what uh, uh, this previous earthquake activity looks like. There it is. Actually showed up pretty nicely. Uh, some of this activity looks like outside interference, but that's a two-pointer on the southwestern edge there of uh, Mount Rainier. We'll watch that and check back on that tomorrow. A little bit of activity out here across the Newberry Volcano as well. That's uh, a volcano in Oregon. Some very small microquakes, so 0 0.7 and a 0.3. We'll continue to watch this and update on any changes. As uh, far as Northern California goes, fairly quiet. A couple, couple smaller quakes out there. Uh, also getting a return of some earthquake activity here outside of Ventura. This area did see some, some good sized swarming out here. Uh, including a 5.1 earthquake last or earlier this past week here. Uh, looks like a little small microquake activity stirring up there tonight. As far as extreme Southern California goes, uh, for the most part, generally light microquake activity. Uh, there's that movement out here in Colorado. That was from earlier this morning, about 1 o'clock or so. Uh, no further activity to report there. And, of course, Texas getting in on some activity. Looking at the big picture here, looks like a little bit of movement in the uh, area of Fox Island's Aleutian Trench here. The latest quake shows a 4.1 earlier this afternoon. As far as any large scale adjustment goes across the Western Pacific, getting a handful of quakes around Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, and also the Japan area, along with uh, some deeper movement quakes here in the Fiji area. The latest one, a uh, pretty deep earthquake, 578 kilometers deep here for a 4.5. We'll continue to watch for some potential movement up around the bend here, considering that deeper activity. As uh, far as New Zealand goes, it's, uh, well, let's just double check here, and then we'll get into some weather activity. Uh, Geonet right here. Uh, 13 hours ago, 2.3. Uh, so aside from that, I'm guessing most of these are going to be very small microquakes out there. Uh, doesn't look like too much reporting going on. A look at the earthquake drums here across New Zealand. Uh, looks pretty quiet. A couple smaller quakes in the various areas there across the North and South Island area. But uh, for now, minimal movement across this area. Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, this lighting up slightly here across the Pahala area. That's the uh, latest quake 2.0. Uh, got some movement here across the um, Kilauea Volcano. Still watching this. It's been earth, uh, having a little earthquake swarm here off and on. Uh, but currently still uh, not erupting. Uh, activity here across the uh, Japan, well, China area. Looks like 4.4 uh, over here uh, in this area of the world. Most of this activity, though, is from early this morning. Handful of uh, deeper quakes and some shallower quakes. Out here around the Sea of Crete, Greece area, did have a 4.4 .4 earthquake off the plate boundary, about 69 kilometers deep. And a look at the EMSC model here will show that earthquake, along with a handful of smaller quakes around the Mediterranean, which is very typical here across this area, some twos and threes stirring up. Uh, so we're not really seeing anything major going on, no uh, major uptick anywhere for that matter. Just uh, seeing some earthquake activity in your typical zones. Uh, let's check out Yellowstone National Park here. Let's see if we got anything going on at the super volcano. Doesn't look like it. Uh, I believe this is some wind event that happened earlier. Doesn't look like earthquake activity. Uh, earthquake activity is yeah, going to look something like, well, but there's not a whole lot of it. 
up here from uh, almost 24 hours ago there's some of that activity maybe another one down here but this uh is some windy vents that stirred up earlier maybe some rain and thunderstorms all right uh let's go back here to the map see what we have uh, as far as earthquake activity goes that should be about it um checking out space weather activity from the solarham.net site did have a long duration m flare um, low grade in flare but it was definitely a long duration notice the uh, the size of this event it did produce a CME uh, but due to the position here of that uh, sunspot and that subsequent uh, solar flare and the CME uh, it's way out there on the eastern limb I don't even think we have a visual of that sunspot yet uh, but it did produce a CME as noted in this stereo uh, image here pretty massive one but again not earth directed way out there on the eastern limb from that m 1.1 uh, let's see if the magnetogram image is picking up any activity out here it doesn't it doesn't look like it we can't even see that sunspot region yet it would be uh definitely be visible over here this is the latest image i believe yep uh, so we're left with some sunspots right now that are uh, fairly stable we'll continue to watch that uh, active region come around the eastern limb maybe we'll get a glimpse of it tomorrow uh, right now, 90% chance of a C flare, M flare at 20, X flare around 1%, and uh, not a whole lot of auroras up there at the higher latitudes. All right, uh, we're looking at the um, Tropical Depression 10. Now, make sure I got the latest information here from the, uh, this is just Tropical Tidbits. You can get your info from many different sites. I just kind of want to use this for now. There is the uh, infrared satellite imagery here. Notice a clustering of thunderstorm activity off the coast here of Mexico into the Gulf. That's uh, very disorganized, but we are seeing that slight rotation here. Now, models are still showing this thing uh, to take a northward track directly towards Florida. Here's a cone of uncertainty on the outline, uh, but it places uh, Florida right in the, pa in the, uh, in the zone here. It could be a, definitely a hurricane uh, come Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening. Uh, before a potential landfall maybe late Tuesday early morning here now we're uncertain on how strong that's going to be uh, you know how far uh, how strong of a hurricane uh, but I think it's got the potential here to ramp up if it uh, if it moves slowly that is let me show you guys the uh, tropical tidbits uh, model down here keep an eye actually we'll go to a different map we're going to go to the um, southeast here and uh, we'll cover watch at the bottom of your screen here notice that low um, that's going to obviously turn into a tropical storm and then a hurricane just before making landfall right about there now that could potentially be category one category two uh, there's some extreme heavy rainfall amounts right there we're talking feet of rain in some of these uh, measurements so uh, you know there's definitely nothing to joke about that's definitely going to be uh, producing some significant rainfall totals there Again, we'll continue to watch this. Each model run has been consistent with uh, making landfall here around the, um, oh, what's that, the Tallahassee area, looks like. Um, but again, there's that cone of uncertainty that we're kind of watching. Um, and we'll keep an eye on that here in the coming days. Uh, precipitation and moisture, 24 hour accumulated precipitation still shows, you know, that the arrival. This one actually a little bit more aggressive with the rainfall totals well inland and covering a good portion here of the uh, eastern states that'll bring uh you know obviously some more further higher totals across the area where it makes landfall down here first uh, and again these up there around nine ten inches maybe a little bit more this is just one weather model and this is all subject to change because we don't know exactly how strong this hurricane is going to be um, when it makes the landfall at uh, the Florida area so you know it's something to watch pretty closely folks again the um, let's go over here to the sp spaghetti models and uh, here's the um, model track so to speak they're mostly consistent here with the uh, you know the center portion the center of the eye going right over here across Florida I don't see any models going off this way or off that way and that's due to the pressure out there uh, that's taken place and also the, uh, the general jet stream patterns and the wind uh, upper level winds that are directing it due north 
Uh, so it's uh, something to watch pretty closely, right? Of course, we'll cover this uh, as the days get closer right now. You know, it's a guessing game as far as how powerful this thing will be. But it looks like something's coming, Florida. So just keep your eyes open and um, be prepared. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Have a good night. We'll catch you guys back here uh, sometime tomorrow morning. Take care.